Hi, everybody. What a fantastic pleasure to launch right in into the September 2022 edition of Living Histories with a treat, a Living Histories talk from Eva Tolik. Um, without ado, I am going to let Eva tell us the story in her own words. Take it away, Eva. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank the organizers of this uh, wonderful series for the invitation to participate. And I will tell you a short story about my uh, scientific life. So let's start with the childhood. Um, my parents worked in the humanities. And this means that at our home, um, everybody was always reading. They were reading and writing stuff all the time. So from the early age, I got this love for books and knowledge and just reading in general. And we lived in this uh, new part of Zagreb. Uh, you can see here these uh, buildings that were very modern at the time in the 70s when we just moved in, uh, these huge buildings. And in front, you see the school. This is the school I went to. Um, it was very nice to uh, grow up there because they were like, about 2,000 kids in the school at the time when I was there. So I had lots of friends and also I had to learn how to fight for the things that are important for me uh, in this kind of crowd. And I loved uh, mathematics in school. I went to national competitions and this is why I chose high school for mathematics and uh, informatics. There I still love mathematics, but I also developed interest for physics, biology and psychology. And I was also very much interested in hanging around with my friends. We had a great time. And then when I uh, was about to finish high school, I was thinking about what to study. And I was choosing between math, physics, and biology. And in the end, I chose molecular biology because biology is focused on life. And life is the most fascinating thing in the universe. And the scientific question that captured me then, and that is still for me the most, uh, the most uh, fascinating question is what is life and how does it function? So this is why I studied molecular biology and I enjoyed it. I learned a lot of cool stuff uh, in molecular biology, but also I did other stuff during my studies. For example, I was a drummer in the punk rock band called Worms Don't Exist. Uh, we had no money for instruments or studios or that kind of stuff, so we made our music uh, in the park, as you can see on the picture, and we, we even made two real albums, and our songs were actually played on the national radio. Uh, but I didn't consider this as a serious uh, career option, I wanted to do a PhD. And uh, there was a little problem with this molecular biology for me. I loved it, but still I, I missed mathematics. I missed the cleanness and the precision of mathematics uh, um, during my studies. So I enrolled in the PhD program of biomathematics. But for the research in biomathics, there was not much uh, to do in Zagreb at that time. So I joined the group of uh, Nenad Grinaistic, who was the head of theoretical chemistry group, which was close enough to theoretical biology. And he was very open. He was open to other fields. He was open to, to new questions, to any intellectual challenge. And he encouraged me to read a lot, to not be uh, narrow, but to just read a lot of stuff from different fields. And I read a really a lot of different stuff. And as he was a theoretical chemist and he was also working on Fullerens, I learned about Buckminster Fuller and, I, and about his beautiful structures. And I fell in love with this notion of tensegrity. So tensegrity means tensional integrity. So it's a structural principle based on isolated compression. Compression is here in these rods and they are inside the net of continuous tension and tension is here in these ropes uh, on the outside. And there was an idea that living cells behave like the segregated structures. And I just had to work on this problem. So I went to Boston to do the research for my PhD at the Harvard School of Public Health. And these were the people that I worked with. Ning Bang was my PhD co-advisor. This was in the group of uh, Jeff Fredberg, who led this large group uh, focused on uh, cellular mechanics. And the idea that cells behave as the security structure uh, originated by Don Inver. And my uh, task as a visiting PhD student was to develop traction force microscopy. And this means uh, we 
put cells on an elastic gel with fluorescent beads. And as the cells exert forces on, the, on this gel, the beads move. And I had to calculate the displacement of the beads and from this displacement to calculate the traction forces. And we managed to develop this method and we used it uh, on our experiments. And indeed, we found uh, that experiments were consistent uh, to a large extent with the tensegrity model of cells. After this, I did two postdocs. The first one in the beautiful Copenhagen at the Niels Bohr Institute, and the second one in uh, even maybe more beautiful Florence at Lenz. And these are my postdoc advisors. With them, I studied uh, forces inside cells and I learned new techniques. I wanted to learn some experimental techniques, biophysical ones. And in particular, I learned optical tweezers, which is basically a focused laser with which you can grab things and move them around and laser ablation with which you can cut something in the cell and then you observe the response of the cell and from this you learn about the forces inside cells. Then I became a research group leader, uh, which was very lucky, uh, in Dresden at the Max Planck Institute of Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics. I stayed there for 10 years and this is the place where I, where I really learned how to do uh, or how this uh, really great biophysics and cellular biology is done. And the reason is simply that I was embedded in this wonderful community of best cell biologists and biophysicists. And uh, the person who influenced me the most probably was uh, Joe Howard. He was one of the directors at the Institute at that time. And he was the one who brought biophysics to the Institute and this mechanistic view of doing science, trying to find the mechanisms, and especially he focused always on the microtubules and motor proteins, and this was very close to, uh, to my interests. And now, after these 10 years, I wanted to come back home for personal reasons. I just wanted to live in my home city, Zagreb, because I really love it. So I managed to become a senior uh, research group leader at the Ruger Boschkovic Institute in Zagreb, and this is where I work now. And now just briefly about the science that we are doing. So since the start of my group, I have been working on microtubules and motor proteins. We first worked for a long time in yeast cells, but more recently we switched to human cells and we are focusing mainly on the mitotic spindle, which is this beautiful micro machine that segregates our chromosomes. And we are uh, usually asking uh, biophysical questions. For example, here we are asking uh, how is the force that segregates the chromosomes generated? And we usually use these biophysical methods. For example, here you can see laser ablation at work. We are cutting something here, then some part of the spindle goes out. And from this kind of behavior, we can learn about these forces. And most recently, we, are, uh, we have been focusing on chromosome segregation errors. So the thing is that the chromosomes don't get always divided properly into two equal parts, but some errors can occur, and these errors can lead to aneuploidy, which is a wrong number of chromosomes in the cell, and this kind of state is related to many diseases such as cancer, and we are studying the causes and the consequences of these segregation errors by taking mainly biophysical approaches. And at the end, I have just a few words about what is most interest, most important in research, and these are the people. So I'm very thankful to my group members and collaborators. As a PI, it's extremely important to have uh, to uh, to have great group members to work to work with these uh, wonderful uh, young people. It's really a privilege to work with these fresh, open-minded, enthusiastic, and and motivated uh, young scientists. It's also important to have great collaborators, especially it's great if these are your friends, so you can be open and honest with them, and uh, you can do together with your collaborators much, much more than you could ever do uh, alone. And to the young people, I would say, be curious. Curiosity is the reason why we do science, because we want to know how things work in nature. So it's important to, to keep this curiosity throughout life, to be playful, be open, open to new questions, new ideas, new ways of thinking, uh, new places, new people. And of course, be friendly because science is a teamwork and it's very important to be friendly to each other uh, to be able to work together. And at the very end, I want to especially thank my family because they are my motivation and my inspiration and I'm just grateful to have them. And thank you all for listening. Now, I will be happy to take any questions that you might have. 
Um, everyone, um, please join me in thanking Kiva for a fantastic talk. If you have questions, please throw them into chat so I can ask a selection. Let me uh, warm up <laughs> the questioning, Eva, by asking what I think is a burning question on many people's minds, which is worms don't exist. You have to tell us why. <laughs> because worms are not a specific species they are uh, the, uh, this this name came from me asking uh, a research assistant at the, at the university about where do worms uh, belong in the classification but they they are just a developmental stage they don't exist as a as a kind of species or a family that was the point so uh, because this uh, research assistant answered to me worms don't exist and that was the sentence that just then uh, stayed as <laughs> something that we were always saying. Um, how riotous. Um, on a somewhat more serious note, let me ask um, let me ask you for what perspective does being an international scientist add to your experience as a biophysicist, which is unusual from, let's say, somebody who takes it for granted that they are in the United States. I think being international is really important. It brings so much new stuff. Uh, for example, I wanted to stay in Croatia for a long time. I stayed really until the moment where, where there was really not enough for me to do there. I love my country. I wanted to stay there. But once I went abroad, I learned so much new things. The horizons really open up. You see that there are other ways of thinking, other ways of doing things, other ways of just uh, asking questions or approaching problems. It, it enriches you so much that I really think that everyone in science and also in general should uh, spend some time of their life abroad in some other, other uh, whatever, other country, other situation. This is really important. And for the scientists, it's really important for the development of your skills, of your ways of thinking, uh, of your approaches to problems. Uh, it's really a great experience. Thank you so much. On that really high note, on behalf of the audience, I'm thanking you again and closing the recording.